All right, so now we're going to be getting into the different classes of the phylum Cnidaria. So phylum is going to be that general category, and now the classes are going to be a little bit more um, specific. So the first class that we have here are Hydrozoa. This is going to include Portuguese man of war and the Hydra. Um, these ones are going to both have Medusa and polyp stages. They are marine, they are sometimes colonial, and they can be bioluminescent. So let's look at some pictures of these guys. This is where it gets fun and you get to see all these beautiful pictures of all these different organisms. So the first type are going to be um, these guys which are called hydroids or hydras. Um, so that's going to be the first one. Here is an actual hydra that you see here. Um, it's kind of like a little miniature anemone and we're actually going to play with these in lab which is super fun. And you can actually see this one is budding right here which is the way it asexually reproduces. Um, then we've got the Portuguese man of war. Um, Portuguese man of war looks a lot like a jelly. However, this part right here is always going to be above the water surface. So they fill it up with gases and it acts like a sail. They cannot actively swim, they just kind of drift, but their um, tentacles can get to be a hundred feet long um, and when they sting you it is painful. I've been stung by them and uh, that was when I really learned I was allergic to jellies and it was really bad. Um, here's a picture of how they would look on the surface. So they could be really brightly colored. They're actually really pretty. Um, and the, the bell at the top, I mean, I've seen them probably about this big, but they don't really get super huge. It's just those long tentacles. And just to show you what can happen to someone um, if they get stung by them, this is a picture of um, the scarring that can happen. Um, I got wrapped up in one all along my back, and luckily I don't have any scars from it, but it was one of the most painful things I've ever experienced. Um, okay. Now, the next class is going to be Scyphozoa, which are going to be the true jellies. So we're trying not to call them jellyfish just because that makes people think they're a fish and they're not, um, but that's fine. I mean, you'll hear me do it. Um, so jellies are pretty cool. If you look at them, there's really not much to them. They have a ring of what's called epithelial muscular tissue, and then they have those tentacles hanging down. So obviously the dominant phase for these guys is going to be the medusa. Um, so in this slide here, I actually have a video of them um, swimming. So hopefully this will work and you can see it. Yes, maybe. Um, so what they do is they pulse. So you can see here how it's kind of pulsing and that's how it's actually going to get from place to place. They're not very efficient at doing that at all, um, but that is going to be that ring of epithelial muscular tissue that they can use to do that. So they're not going to get anywhere super fast, but they do at least have a little bit more mobility than, say, a Portuguese man of war. Oh, and there comes a little turtle because turtles like to eat them. So I think this is um, pretty cool. This is a leatherback sea turtle. They can get to be about the size of a Volkswagen Beetle. And they consist, um, they actually eat jellies. That's their main food source, which is just crazy because they're so big. Um, so just to give you an idea of the size of these guys, they get pretty huge. And, um, oh, I thought I had a good picture. I can definitely find this for you. This is super cool to see. Um, and that is the way that their mouth has adapted to deal with um, living in this environment where they are going to be eating these slippery jellies, right? So um, if you Google leatherback sea turtle mouth, um, you'll actually be able to see, please say that that typed, that didn't type, did it? All right, leatherback sea turtle mouth. Um, and if you take a look at the pictures, it's pretty crazy to see how they've actually um, adapted to living in this environment. Yeah, this is a good picture here. So um, what they have is this mouth that has all these huge kind of spines inside of it. And um, there we go. Let's see if I can open that up a little bit more to show you. Um, yeah, so you can see all these kind of like inward facing spines and that's so that they can actually grip onto those jellies as they um, eat them. So as I was saying before, some people are extremely allergic to um, jellies. I myself am, and um, everybody loves when I show these pictures. Some people hate it. I can understand why. Um, the last time I was in Costa Rica, I thought that I was over my allergy for some reason, and I went diving and I got stung pretty badly. So this is just a picture of my arm the day that it happened. Not really bad. You could see a couple of the lines from the tentacles here and there. 
And I just decided I was going to document this as um, I was going. This is my leg. You can kind of see a couple of stings there. Not so bad. There's the back of my leg. You can see a couple of stings there, a couple of stings here and there. Not, not super bad. However, um, it got a little worse. So this was a little bit later. You could see the stings are starting to swell up, um, and it was itching and burning and oozing, and it was pretty gross. Um, and now you can see the blisters are starting to form. And it just keeps getting worse and worse. Here's that same arm. Now you can see, um, oh my god, it's getting a little bit worse. It's swelling up. <clears throat> and my legs started to swell up and um, there I am hiking in the rainforest and I was like I am going insane my legs are on fire and I looked down and could see why um, so yeah you could definitely see how bad my uh, legs were getting as this progressed so um, pretty pretty bad stuff so there you could see it again it was just getting uh, worse and worse so eventually what happened was I had to go to the um, pharmacist in downtown San Jose when I finally got out of my little town and took care of business, but that was not fun. That was not fun. Okay, now back to the next type, class Cubozoa. These guys are super cool. Obviously Cubozoa, that's talking about the box jellyfish, and you can see what they look like right here. That's one, and here is another one coming up, and they're about the size of your pinky nail. They're tiny. However, they can have tentacles that are 20, 30 feet long, and when these guys sting you, you have a couple of minutes to get help if you don't, you can go into nervous system failure. So they're extremely, extremely dangerous. You find these in the Pacific, and they have nets on the um, shore to kind of keep them off out of the swim areas, but they have lifeguards that are trained to deal with that. Um, if you can get airlifted out of there, you're looking at a couple of weeks of very, very severe pain. Good times. Okay, now the next class is going to be anthozoa. And anthozoa, it literally means sea flower. And so you can see here that's an anemone. And so these guys are going to have that polyp phase as their dominant phase. Um, so that's an anemone that you see there. This is a picture of corals. Um, so those are all going to be in the class anthozoa. All of these are still stinging though, right? Because they're all in the phylum cnidaria. All right. Now we're going to go on to the other phylum that's in the group radiata, and that's going to be tenophora, which are going to be what are called comb jellies. So um, in this picture coming up, you can see these lines here that look almost like railroad tracks. Someone saw those, they're fused cilia, and someone said, wow, those look like a comb. We'll call them comb jellies, and there you go. Um, these guys are super cool, though, because they can be bioluminescent, which is just awesome. And so I have this video here that'll show you that. Um, these guys do not sting at all. They can get to be pretty big, like the size of like a pineapple about, and um, but they don't sting, which is nice. Um, but they do filter feed, and in order to do that, they'll actually use... Um, they, these lights that they can kind of light up, which are called chromatophores, which are um, cells within their body that they can use to change colors. And um, hopefully this will come up and you can see it, but um, it's pretty awesome. It just looks like, um, I'll turn off the sound, so I will mute you. Um, so anyway, hopefully this will get going and you can actually see it. Um, but you can already see the colors there. I mean, they are gorgeous. and. Uh, yeah, you could kind of see it happening. It's a little jumpy when we're showing this, but um, it's really, really, really pretty stuff. And um, they're super cool organisms. So here, yeah, you can kind of see it doing all of its fluttering and really, really, I mean, it looks like a spaceship to me. So those are going to be the comb jellies. Okay, so now let's move on. I will get your notes up if I can see them. Um, but basically, we're going to get out of that. Let's see if I can get down and find my other stuff that's going on. But anyway, this is going to be the phylum platyhelminthes. So now we're going to get into what are called the ace or pseudocelomates. Pseudocelomates, remember that means false body cavity. I'm going to minimize this for a sec just to see if I can get to what I need to get to. There we go. All right, so now we're going to be in the bilaterally symmetrical organisms that um, are going to, I'm sorry, acelomates, I said pseudocelomates. Um, okay, so now we've got phylum platyhelminthes, which are going to be flatworms. And um, the way I remember is plat, flat, 
I don't know if that helps, but you know, I have my weird ways of remembering stuff. So here's going to be Plat Platy Hill Menthes. Now, let's talk about some things that we notice. First of all, um, you can see they have a gastrovascular cavity, so we're starting to see a little bit more advancement as far as the tissues and things go, um, organ systems. Um, we're also going to see everything in yellow is going to be nervous tissue. So still not a true brain or anything, and nothing we've talked about really has a brain yet. But you can see that there's concentrated ganglia, so the start of something that could be considered to be a very simple brain, if at all. Um, they have these eye spots, and um, they're really cute. Everyone thinks that they're super cute, but they are just, they're not really eyes. They're just used to sense light and dark. They can't really see anything. So as far as these guys go, there's going to be a couple of classes. So um, the flatworms can be divided into these different classes, the first one being class Turbularia. Turbularia are going to be what that diagram was of, and those are going to be planaria. We're going to play with these in lab, super fun to play with. These guys are capable of regeneration. So they're not really big, but what you could do is you can cut them in half, and this bottom half will grow a new head, and the top half will grow a new tail, which is really cool. If you're really good, you can actually try to cut in between the eyes, and they'll grow two heads. So that's fun. Um, another one that's going to be in this category are going to be the flukes, which is going to be class Trematoda. And so the flukes are big flatworms. This is actually in the background somebody's liver. And um, humans can get them, mammals can get them. Um, they're obviously parasitic, not a fun time. Um, and there's actually a type of trematode that, um, you know, they all get a bad name, but there's marine flatworms too, trematodes. And um, this one is actually parasitic, but it's a lot prettier than those ones I was showing you before. Um, and so this is one that's actually eating coral. Then you're going to have the other class called Cestoda, and Cestoda are going to be the tapeworms. So tapeworms are going to be segmented, flatworms, and each segment is going to have its own set of um, organs and everything. So if you were to get sick with a, with a um, tapeworm and you leave one little piece in there, the whole thing can grow back. And they can get to be pretty large, which is frightening to think about. All right, there's our marine flatworm. Then the next category is going to be Nemertia, which are rib, um, ribbon worms. Now, um, this is a new phylum, and the reason is because they have a complete digestive tract. They have um, a circulatory system, and they have um, something in their head called a proboscis, which is super cool. So inside their head, they have this little thing that's like a spear, and they look like a harmless little worm, and those are grains of sand behind them. They're not very big. And what they could do is go up to something, and then when they get close enough, they go, Gah! and they actually shoot that harmless harpoon out of their head, and they can kill their prey that way. So they're pretty voracious predators, which is pretty cool. All right. Then the next category, nematoda. Nematoda are going to be the roundworms. And so this is a picture of a roundworm right here that looks like a pinworm to me. A lot of these guys are going to be um, parasitic. Um, in this next slide, you actually have a picture, if I can get it to come up, of um, vinegar eels, which we're going to play with in lab. A very, very tiny, microscopic, almost um, little round worms, and they're found in um, unpasteurized vinegar. They're not parasitic or anything like that, but um, just kind of interesting to take a look at. Uh, next phylum if I can get there, is going to be rotifera. Um, so rotifers are going to be, that actually means wheel bearing, and that's because their mouth actually does look like a little wheel. And um, these guys are obviously microscopic, and they're found in plankton. And um, they're pretty complex, actually, for as little as they are, but they have that real ring of cilia around their mouth. And then the last one um, that we're going to talk about in this section is going to be cycliophora. And cycliophora are going to be these guys you see here. They ha have that kind of round wheel-like mouth as well. Um, but these guys are not planktonic. They're actually only found on the mouth parts of a lobster. And I believe these were discovered around 1993. So I was actually in college when they found these guys. And I just remember thinking that was crazy. There's a whole phylum that they found in the 90s that's living on the mouth parts of a lobster. Super crazy. Um, so that's going to be our first section. Um, and then in the next section, we'll get into um, coelomate invertebrates.